happened in the world of the two biggest wrestling competitors this week. I will be talking about WWE Raw and going on to TNA. I hope you enjoy. No fear, no solid build-up show for Wrestlemania this week, even though it did lack a lot of in-ring action, but I get the feeling that we're going to be seeing more than enough of that payoff at Wrestlemania. Starting off the show with Taker HBK was a smart move by WWE to counter TNA's permanent debut to Monday night. The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels continue to help build this match and make it seem bigger and more important than last year's encounter. Taker has never been really tearing down the arena with his promos, but HBK seems to bring out the best in him. The build-up got even more exciting with the announcement that their WrestleMania match is now a no-disqualification count-out match, because God forbid if WWE messed up this match with a run-in or a screw job finish. I knew straight away that the tag match between Shaw Miz and Black Magic and White Shadow, aka R-Truth and John Morrison, wouldn't happen. Because why would WWE give away one of their WrestleMania matches for free on Raw? Luckily, it only lasted for roughly 30 seconds, but the post-match build-up was strong. I'm not really a fan of the Joe Mo R-Truth tag team, as it doesn't make sense. Why not pair up R-Truth with Matt Hardy, who have the history together, and more importantly, some chemistry? The Money in the Bank qualifying match was a given. We all knew Evan Bourne would win. What's the point of even having the other eight guys in the match, since we all know Christian will eventually win it? Even though the match has not got much star power, Money in the Bank could steal a show at WrestleMania, since this type of match always has a lot of potential. It was good to see Triple H vs Sheamus finalise at this week's Raw. However, the match could have been built up a little earlier to get a good push and lay down some excitement for the fans, but there's still a few weeks left to get it promoted. The main event of John Cena vs Vladimir Kozlov, Drew McIntyre, Jack Swagger, Mark Henry and eventually Vince McMahon in the Garland match was surprising, yet another Cena bar fest as per usual. Cena certainly took a kick in, but he kept on ticking. Eventually Vince pinned Cena, but only after he had five different finishes used on him. The negatives of Raw was the forgettable Divas match. Two out of the six Divas are classically trained wrestlers, while all the others are former models, Diva Search contestants. And in matches like this, you can see who they are and they stick out like a sore thumb. Raw really needs to start looking at the Smackdown Divas and give them some storylines as soon as possible. So all in all, Raw was a perfectly normal show. Nothing too amazing, but nothing too bad. Hopefully, next week with guest host Stone Cold Steve Austin, Raw will put out an amazing show. challenge Raw, but in the end, their decisions again were a disadvantage to the whole effing show. The opening match was good, getting Flair and Hogan out there to capture any new fans, curious to see what TNA is made of, and then making a match main event to hold on to the audience until the end. When Sting came out and turned on Hogan and Abyss, I was actually really surprised, nor do I don't think I would be fond of the new Sting. I was happy to see him hit Dixie Carter around. The next matchup was a classic exhibition match between Daniels, Kaz and champion Doug Williams. I can't begin to say how fantastic some of the moves were in this match, but I have put a video on to see Doug Williams' finisher because it is truly amazing. The knockouts match on TNA compared to the Divas match on Raw was a massive difference, comparing Jake the Snake Roberts, who is absolutely awesome, to John Cena, who is the worst ever. The beautiful people won the three-way tag match to become new knockout tag team champions and I was so happy at this because they are my favourite stable ever and because they are playing under Freebirds rules 
hopefully the beautiful Lacey Von Eric will get a chance to wrestle. Seeing RVD again was the highlight of the show. However, that soon got took away when Sting beat him up for what felt like an hour. But hell, that's the best way of making Sting a true bad guy. I was happy to find out that X-Pac was going to have a match against Eric Young, then upset seeing that he wasn't in any attire. I did too much to ask for that I want to see X-Pac, Six-Pac, the one 2 3 kid wrestle again. Please, TNA. The whole Angle Army thing just embarrassed me. I hate patriotism, but the less said the better. I fell asleep during the Beer Money Jeff Jarrett match, which doesn't leave me much to say. Move on. The last match between Hogan and Abyss against Flair and AJ Styles was a bloody gore fest, but to be honest, I enjoyed a bit of blood. Watching this match made me realise that Flair is truly a legend and could teach a lot of the younger guys these days about how to keep up in a match. So in all, I think TNA was higher than its usual standard, but they should have pushed out the boat a bit more match-wise to compete with Raw.